Recall that a square matrix is said to be symmetric if it's equal to its own transpose. An interesting property that real symmetric matrices have is that their eigenvalues are guaranteed to be real as well. At this point, we've seen several examples of real matrices that still have complex eigenvalues, but this complication is never encountered by real symmetric matrices. Their eigenvalues are guaranteed to be real. So let's go through a proof. So for our proof, let's assume that lambda is an eigenvalue of our arbitrary real symmetric matrix A, and that x is a corresponding eigenvector. Then by definition, A times x equals lambda times x. Now on the left of both sides of this equation, we'll multiply by x conjugate transpose. So we have x conjugate transpose times A times x equals x conjugate transpose times lambda times x. Now the left side of this equation we're just going to leave for now, but the right side we're going to work with a bit and we'll be able to simplify it in an interesting way. This lambda is just a scalar, so we can slide it out to the left, leaving us with lambda times x conjugate transpose times x. But x conjugate transpose times x is just another way of writing the dot product. In the case where x is a complex vector, this conjugate is consistent with the complex dot product, so the equation holds. In the case where x is a real vector, the conjugate doesn't do anything, and so again, the equation still holds. Now the dot product of x with itself is the same as the square of the magnitude of x, so this equals lambda times the magnitude of x squared. Remember, that's because the magnitude of a vector x is the square root of its dot product with itself. So without the square root, it's just the square of the magnitude. Now consider the far left part of this string of equations and the far right part. We can divide both sides by the square of the magnitude of x in order to get lambda, the eigenvalue, by itself. Doing that, we have that lambda equals x conjugate transpose ax divided by the square of the magnitude of x. Now the magnitude of x is guaranteed to be a real number and its square is as well. So if we can show that this numerator is real, that will suffice to show that the eigenvalue lambda is real. Because again, the denominator for sure is a real number. So the only thing that's up in question is the numerator. And like we said a moment ago, the conjugate of something doesn't change it if it's real. So we're going to take the conjugate of this numerator and show that it actually has no effect. Hence, the numerator must be real. So taking the conjugate, we can take the conjugate of the individual parts. So that's x conjugate transpose conjugate and ax conjugate. That's basically just distributing the conjugate across those terms. Now the conjugate of x transpose conjugate, that would mean that we just negate any imaginary components, that's what the first conjugate does, but then the second conjugate would negate them again. So in total, nothing has changed at all, the two conjugates cancel out. So x conjugate transpose conjugate is just x transpose. We of course still have that ax conjugate, but we can swap this order of multiplication by taking the transpose of ax conjugate and moving that to the left, and taking the transpose of x transpose, which is just x. So now we are here, and we can rewrite the conjugate of ax as the conjugate of a times the conjugate of x, and again we're taking the transpose of this. Now the conjugate of a, because a is taken to be a real symmetric matrix, well, the conjugate of A is just A, because the conjugate of a real matrix does not change it. So this is equal to this. But then the transpose of a product is just the product of the transposes in the reverse order. So this we can rewrite as X conjugate transpose times A transpose, and of course still times X on the right. And then the last step, a was taken to be a symmetric matrix, so by definition, A transpose is the same as A, and so this is where we end up, which is exactly where we started. In total, we took the conjugate of X conjugate transpose AX, and we ended up with X conjugate transpose AX. 
so taking the conjugate of the whole thing didn't change it. Hence, it must be a real number. So we've shown that the eigenvalue lambda is a quotient of two things. The denominator we know is real, and we just showed that the numerator is real by showing that taking the conjugate didn't change it. Since lambda is a quotient of real numbers, lambda must be real as well, and lambda was just an arbitrary eigenvalue of an arbitrary real symmetric matrix. And so the result is proven. A real symmetric matrix will have real eigenvalues. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.